Good morning, welcome back to another episode of Things I've Learned on YouTube. My name is Nick, AKA The Limey, and we're not downstairs in the kitchen making smoothies. We're not out in the garage building or fixing something today. We are upstairs in the office. I thought today was a perfect chance to give you guys a a little behind the scenes, a little what goes into uh, what I'm doing trying to build this YouTube channel. So um, last week we went on holiday, we managed to get out to the coast with the family. So a lot of my gear has been broken down, took my camera with me, took the GoPro with me, took all the bits of things that we wanted to capture some family memories. So as I put everything back together, I thought I'd bring you guys along and you can see what gear I use. First things first though, we need to get some better audio. So let me set that up and we'll get going. So this is the Rode Wireless Go. This is what I use for all of my audio when I'm not recording, just on the inbuilt. We'll get this turned on in a second. Uh, I paired this with the Lavalier Go. So this is the microphone from Rode. It's a great setup. The reason I like this setup so much is it's lovely and compact. You've got your bit that the microphone connects into. Now this is actually a microphone itself, so you can just talk to it like that. I know Potato Jet's been using this recently. Um, I was there first, Potato Jet. Uh, I know he's been using this recently, and you can actually buy a stick that you plug this into with a, uh, a windshield on it, and it looks like a standard, traditional, old-fashioned microphone. Um, so that's one reason I have this. The other reason is I love the fact that it's wireless. So that's what goes on me. This is what goes into the camera. Okay, this is the, the uh, receiver for the camera. Let's turn that on. We'll turn that on. Get those paired. Really is a really easy process. The only thing I found quite annoying is to use it with the GoPro. I had to buy the GoPro adapter. So let me plug all this up, get wired up so you get some better audio, and we'll go from there. Right, so now we're wired up. Hopefully this is a bit better sound. We've got the Lavalier attached to my shirt right here. I've got the ah, receiver that literally clips on my pocket or my waistband. Obviously while I'm sat down, goes on the pocket. And then the main part of the, um, the wireless receiver is attached to the GoPro. Plugged into the little connector, as I said, bit frustrating because GoPro charge, I think it's 40 pounds just for that little adapter. Again, it's a one-off, so it's not really the end of the world. You're spending God knows how much on a Hero 8 anyway. 40 quid extra is not gonna break the bank, is it? Now, what I like about this is it gives me great sound. So it's a lovely day out, get the windows open. There's probably a dog barking in the background somewhere. Uh, and hopefully that's not being picked up on the mic. You can just hear me on what I'm saying. So lovely and clear. So we've got the GoPro set up, we've got the, um, the Rode Wireless Go all hooked in there. But this isn't the camera that I do most of my work on. So for most of everything I do, <coughs> I use this. This is the uh, Canon EOS M6 Mark II. Now, the reason I bought one of these and um, I kind of went against everything everyone was saying when I was doing all my research to try and work out what camera I wanted. Um, this camera was getting really, really, really good reviews apart from one major issue. Um, so it does everything you want in a vlog style camera. So perfect for someone like me who wants to be not necessarily vlogging, but being able to grab things, do a bit of run and gun, um, do some shots, things like that. Everyone loves this camera. It's 4K, it's small, it's compact, uh, shoots at 30 frames a second in 4K, um, does everything you want, apart from the screen flips up just like that. Um, so that's where the screen flips up. Now, the problem with that is, um, there's two problems, if I'm being honest. The big problem is if it's ever so slightly not perfectly up, then the image doesn't rotate. So you're looking at yourself upside down, which is fine. So you gotta make sure it's completely folded up like that. The biggest problem that I think the reason people hated this and didn't want to use it as a vlogging camera is that you really want to have a microphone attached to it. So the hot shoe is right on the top. If I clip in my, let's see if I can do this without getting myself tangled up. If I try and clip in my receiver, I can't now fold up my screen. So that's one of the issues, and so I can't see myself. So it becomes 
pointless as a vlogging camera because I don't know if I'm actually in shot, in frame, just a close up of my eyeball or anything like that. Um, and that's fine if you've got something compact like I use. But imagine if you're running with a full on road mic or uh, any form of mic, external microphone attached to it right there. You'll be literally just staring at a microphone. The screen won't go up. So it really did make the screen completely pointless. A lot of um, cameras flip out. So that way they're much better, much easier to see. As a camera though, I absolutely love it. Or the other problem that um, this has is it only records for 29 minutes. So part of my window tint video, uh, so generally what I do is I just press go and I crack on. Uh, I'll do four or five takes, things like that. And when I get to 29 minutes, it just stops recording. It doesn't beep. Sometimes it stops again. It just carries on into a new, into a new um, clip. But it's 29 minutes. So there is a record limit on this. Battery wise, absolutely no complaints whatsoever, okay? Uh, does everything I need it to do, but people didn't like it because of this. So I figured, you know what? There's always a solution, right? So I went online and I jumped on the small rig website and I bought a cage, okay? So I got a small rig cage. Just seen it is actually mine. It's personalized for me. Hey, big thumbs up to small rig. And with this, you can mount hot shoes wherever you want. So let me put this bit together, two seconds. Oh, before I do that, one thing I love about small rig is they've really thought about everything. Magnetic screwdriver. It's a little magnet at the bottom, always there. And when you're finished, just clips back in, okay? So let me get this built, two seconds. Voila. So now we've got a similar size footprint. So if you want to hold this, it's a similar size footprint to what you used to just with a bare naked camera. Uh, you can still get access to everything as you normally do. Your buttons and everything all still work. Your shutter button, all your dials completely, completely uh, accessible to you, okay? Uh, I've stuck a hot shoe on one side and a hot shoe on the other. And this means that I can literally just drop in The receiver, obviously this is the bit that's attached to me, the receiver's on the GoPro, and then it means I can flip up my screen without any problems, okay? So this is one of the reasons that I went with the wireless Go setup as well. Um, if I'm working on a GoPro like I am right now, just plug it straight into the GoPro, I unhook the, um, the wireless receiver, plug it straight into the, uh, to the Mark VI, Job's done, okay? So I change my audio, everything becomes prioritized where the Lavalier the mic is attached to. So that's the basis of what I use, the Canon, um, the Canon M6 Mark II. Now, for those of the Arpa Jet fans, follow Gene on YouTube or Instagram. He's actually just done a giveaway of one of these. Uh, again, they're great cameras. They've got a few flaws. Is it the perfect camera? No, but for the price that you pay for it, I think it's a really, really good camera. To complement that, um, and this is something I blame Peter McKinnon for. Um, I use a switch pod. So the switch pod is really cool. I ordered this and I ordered the ball attachment. Um, so you've got the flexible head. So you can move the head wherever you want it. Um, again, I blame Peter McKinnon. I saw him do a review of this. I think they sent him one when in one of his channels about a year ago, two years ago. It's really good. Uh, sort of pistol grip style uh, tripod. And you'll probably see me in a lot of videos just literally drop the camera and just carry on talking to the camera, okay? So let's hook this up just so you can see what sort of size uh, footprint we're working with. So that is pretty much what I'm talking to and what I'm using all of the time. When I get to somewhere that I want to just pop it down, the legs fold out and you've got a great tripod, okay? And you can talk sort of at eye level, which is fantastic. As I said, you've got the ball head. So if you do want to have some, don't know why you would. If you want to have some funky angles, you can completely uh, tilt the camera. Uh, obviously, it makes more sense if the ball head is facing you, so you can pull it down and things like that, okay? So that's what I use as my camera rig. Now, lenses. Um, so as this channel is called Things I've Learnt on YouTube, uh, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, YouTubers. I bought the EOS Mark VI, came with a stock lens. 
This is the 15 to 45 EF, EF lens. Uh, it's got stabilizer built in, which is quite handy. This gives me the opportunity to sort of you know, get a bit close to something. If I want to be, if I'm working in the garage or I'm working in the in the kitchen, um, the table we have in the kitchen is I think five feet wide, seven feet long. So if I want to put this at the end of the table and really sort of get a bit closer on what I'm doing, this is the lens I use. But generally, I use this. This is the EF 11 to 22 mil lens. Again, big recommendation from Potato Jet. Um, he suggested this purely because that 11 mil gives you a lovely wide angle, okay? So I can get really in close, I can be holding the camera and still not just get my face, I get some of my surroundings and things behind me as well. So you get a really good sort of aspect ratio, okay? So let's hook this on the, on the camera as well. And there we have it. This is what I work with, okay? Ah, let's be back up, it should be, there we go. So that is what I work with. This is what I'm normally looking at when I'm chatting to you guys, okay? And again, if I want to just get down, pop it on the desk, it's a really easy drop down and I can carry on talking, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the audio out of the GoPro, jam it in the Mark VI, and we'll pick it up from there. Right, so there we have it. We've gone from the GoPro over there, still recording, to me, in a vlogging mode, okay? Now the lovely thing is with the switch pod, you can drop it straight down. I've got some headphone cables, chuck it on the leg, that's fine. And you've got it. So now we're on the audio of the EOS Mark VI. Let's unhook. This little bad boy, we'll plug it in. Two seconds. And we should now be on the wireless go audio. So that's pretty much my whole setup as far as tech. Um, get that back in the bag. The Hero 8 GoPro, let's turn it off, has the small red case around it as well, just in case, because these are action cameras. Wanted a bit of protection. What I love about this is there's a little push button at the end and you can pull your battery straight out to swap it. The only thing you've got to remember with this is you need to remove the battery door so it's now not waterproof. Battery door's in here somewhere, okay? So, let's have a look what else is in the bag. Actually, let's use the GoPro for this. So now I can record myself vlogging to you guys. Uh, so this is the wireless go on the side of the camera. Okay, so what else is in the bag? So in the bag is pretty much all the things that I need to keep going. So uh, a little four terabyte um, Samsung or Seagate. Seagate hard drive. Uh, I've got the little soft case for the Go. The 15 to 45 lens. Some bag of random Allen keys for all of the smart, uh, small rig cases. Um, a selfie stick. Uh, this uh, this was a uh, purchase a few years ago for a Christmas present from my sister-in-law. But what works quite nice is I've stuck on the the GoPro nut on the eight and the small rig case. It comes built in, magnetized, so you can just. Slot that in. And now I've got myself a selfie stick with a GoPro. So if I want to do anything crazy with this or get at a nice decent high angle or something I can't reach, I've now got that option as well, okay? So that stays in there. And I do love the fact that the feet on the small uh, small rig case, they're just magnetic, magnetic, okay? So that's in there. Now we have this item. This is for turning an internal hard drive into an external hard drive effectively. This connects to the edge of the hard drive, USB straight into your computer, 
power source. Now, I've never used it, but I do have, come with me, a sizable desktop PC oh, under there that I think has quite a lot of hard drive storage in there that I never ever use. And it's stuff that I probably have for six or seven years that you know you always might want it. The problem is that that thing takes probably 25 minutes nowadays to boot up. It's really old, it's really clunky. Uh, even it's got super fast chip in there, super fast um, drivers and everything's in there that makes it go really, really fast. For some strange reason, I think it's just got so much bloatware and crap installed on it that it just takes absolutely forever. So maybe in an upcoming video, I'll, um, wherever I put that thing, there it is. Um, what I'll do is I'll give this a go and see if it was worth it. Again, infomercial crap. Let's see if it actually works. Um, speaking of infomercial crap, I recently, uh, recently, no, eight weeks ago, I bought what I thought was a motorized slider. Uh, this arrived in the post while we were away. It's supposed to be a fully controllable motorized slider. I think you'll all agree. This is anything but a completely fully motorized slider. Uh, another infomercial jobby that I thought was probably too good to be true, and it really was. Uh, it's got the little nut, and it's obviously a very manual slider on there. So if I wanted to uh, do a super cool shot, I could have the GoPro, and I could slide it. Oh my gosh, probably too tight. Yeah, too tight, there we go. So I had the GoPro, I could slide it across. I just don't think the surface area is big enough that you'd even get a decent image or a decent picture or the effect that you're trying to achieve. Definitely not what I paid for, definitely not what I wanted. Uh, and the other thing that came with it, uh, well, everything's twisting at once. The other thing that came with it was um, a mobile phone. This is a mobile phone. I oh, know it's just a standard uh, Z brace to go on top of a tripod. Again, not really sure what I was thinking when I bought this. I think I thought that and the slider would work well together. I'd have a good solid base. I've got some different heights that we can put this thing at. I think I was feeling artsy fartsy when I bought this. But again, not what we expected, not what we wanted, not what we paid for. Uh, probably never ever going to get used. Um, right, what else? The, I guess the big part of what I do is, is editing. So this is what I use for editing. This is a Razer Stealth, this is the 13. Uh, pick this up, this is another eBay bargain. Um, I do like it, it's a really fast computer. Obviously very sexy with the chroma and the changing colors on the keyboard, not the reason to buy it. Uh, it's super light. I mean, this is my standard everyday laptop. This is what I this is actually run my business on. This is my laptop that I have that powers all of my travel business. This is the YouTube laptop. So big difference in size. There we go, it's pretty better visual for you guys. Big difference in size, massive difference in weight. This one is the sort of the weight of a small car. Um, Razer Stealth 13, super, super expensive. This is the 4K version with the touchscreen. eBay bargain, managed to get an absolute steal. Um, done really well, I think it handles editing quite, quite effortlessly. Battery life is terrible, especially if you're running Premiere Pro on a 4K screen without it being plugged in. I literally get half an hour to 45 minutes and it just chews through my battery. Uh, I'd never try and render uh, a big, of a full 20 minute video on this without it being plugged in, okay? So uh, yeah, it does make for some interesting wandering around the house looking for plugs, because as ever we can't find things. Um, but a great screen, nice and easy to work on, really easy touchpad, uh, works really well. Face recognition, everything as you'd expect with a high-end laptop. So that's what I do most of my editing on. Um, and pretty much, other than a whole bunch, a whole bunch of batteries, uh, so spare batteries for the GoPro, uh, card readers, uh, USB-C cables, and a 
uh, one to read the cards on the laptop. So the two different styles of cards I use, the GoPro and the Canon. I mean, really, that's kind of what I use for making my YouTube videos. I've got some lights. They're in a big bag down there. Uh, there you go, I won't show you too much of my mess. Uh, big bag down there. Uh, that's lights. If I'm feeling a bit, a bit artsy fartsy, a bit, a bit creative, I will crack on and set them up. But other than that, really, most of it is just as you see it. The last thing I want to share with you guys was just a bit of, honestly, just a bit of great customer support and customer service that I received from a brand that I actually do love. Uh, and it's a company called Dbrand. Now, if you're familiar with Dbrand, then fantastic. If not, this is something that um, MKHB in introduced me to. So, the channel, things I learned on YouTube. This is where I get all the ideas for stuff like this. Peter McKinnon got me hooked on switch pods. I thought they were fantastic products when I saw them. Had to buy them, it was one of the first purchases I made after buying a camera. Um, the small rig cases, again, only place I've ever heard, heard of them before doing this and looking into it seriously was on YouTube, things that people keep buying. Dbrand, uh, if you haven't noticed, I run an S20 Ultra, so the Galaxy S20 Ultra is the 5G version. Um, and I'd had a skin on this from the very start, I had the case on because we were away last week. Um, I've always had a skin on this, so it's not the cosmic grey. Um, just to protect it, I don't normally drop phones, I'm pretty, pretty good, and they're insured. Um, but I wanted a skin from Dbrand, and I was watching one of the MKHB videos, and he had this, which is the robot camo. Um, the robot camo, I absolutely loved. So these are 3M, they're just a tough sort of nylon uh, type product. And I've had this on. Now, what I like about this is they give you a cutout for the, um, for the camera as well. So it's why you have to buy it specific for the camera, the phone you've got. So you've got a full cutout for the camera. This comes away, completely separate. Put that on and then you attach that separately, okay? So I bought that one originally and I bought a black carbon fiber because it's carbon fiber. Who doesn't like carbon fiber? There we go, plain black carbon fiber. I bought these, but these guys are based in my old hometown in Toronto, so on King Street, I believe it is. And they, um, again, there's shipping fees, right? It's expected traveling halfway around the world. You've got to cover the cost of shipping. So I bought these two, paid for shipping, no issues. I think it's about 20 pounds plus about five pounds in shipping. Um, so they're not ridiculously expensive, about a tenner. Pretty much what you spend on a case. Let's double check. So the robot camo is actually a uh, expired uh, bit of kit. So you can't actually buy this in. We have to request it from them to see if they'll set you up with one. Um, but they do the same skin for all your phones, for Nintendo Switches, for earpods, earbuds, whatever they're called from Apple, all of the iPhones, laptop skins, do absolutely everything and anything that you can think of. Um, I did look at getting one for the Blaze. As it's the stealth, problem with the stealth is fingerprint city. As soon as you touch this thing, you leave absolute masses of fingerprints on it. Um, but they are, just go to a active drop. So yeah, I mean, this is 1995, let's ballpark US dollars, because I'm not sure, I'm 99% sure these guys are a Canadian company. Um, I believe they were, contact us. Contact us, where are you based? Yeah, so Queen Street in Toronto. So that's where these guys originated from. I think these come from the US, in fairness. Um, but $20 Canadian or $20 US, pretty much 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 less nowadays. So it's about sort of 12, 13 pounds for me. Um, and obviously the second was a little bit cheaper, I think this was about eight pounds. Um, so I paid about 20 pounds plus shipping. And really happy with the product. Probably had it on my phone for two months, two and a half months. And I was doing the airing cupboard build. And I noticed when I put my hand in my pocket, the corner of the camera um, skin had peeled right back. So I thought, hmm, a bit strange. But what happened is that the uh, robot camo would actually separate itself from the 3M adhesive on the back. So the 3M adhesive was still stuck where it needed to be, but the camo that's obviously put on top of the 3M had peeled away. Reached straight out to Dbrand, Got to say, fantastic customer service. They asked for a picture, I sent them this picture. And they literally within 24 hours, 
had a brand new one on its way to me. These things are not the easiest thing to install. I'm gonna be honest, it's a bit fiddly. You've got to sort of use hair dryers and pencils and techniques or explain on the website. I'll do a video installing that on my uh, back on my uh, S20 Ultra. I didn't do the black camo on this because I was hoping they were gonna send me a robot camo. The, 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 the carbon camo, the, the carbon fiber, sorry, not camo. The carbon fiber is lovely, looks great. But you know what, I used to get so many people comment on the back of my phone. Uh, no one seems to care that it was an S20 Ultra anymore. They all love the fact it had the robot camo. It's just something that I've never seen in the UK. Um, and that comes from MKHB. So Marcus, thank you for that, because uh, that is one of his permanent sponsors. Um, I'll leave links to Dbrand, to Razor. I'll leave links to all of the stuff that I've talked about. None of it's sponsored. I get nothing from this. I just want you guys to be able to buy the same thing. Give you guys a shout out to SwitchPod. Again, they've been fantastic uh, re responding to, co uh, to posts and things on Instagram. So a great company. Uh, I just wish they could do something for me on shipping so I get the mobile, mobile phone uh, connector. Before we go, I want to do a huge shout out to the guys who entered the wallet giveaway in one of the previous videos in the mail time video. Thank you so much. Uh, we had some great response. That video got over almost 16,000 views, I think it was. Uh, so it was great to see people actively messaging and partaking in that, and I'll be doing the giveaway on that as well. Um, depending when this video comes out, we may have already done it. If not, keep your eye on the Instagram feed. Uh, all the details are in the description of the video. Guys, please like, please share, please give me a huge thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. 99% of people that watch this video aren't subscribed. Turn the notifications on. You'll know when I am uploading more videos. Guys, thank you so much for coming behind the scenes with me. Really, this is just an excuse for me to set everything back up so I can get out to the garage and do the next project. Um, but I thought I'd bring you guys along for this. So thank you so much for being a part of it. Have a fantastic day and I'll uh, catch you on the next one. Get it, I'm a in a comma, gotta get it, get it, and it's a ticket, talking miser for the biggest, it's a comma in a